Greetings, folks. There's about 37 other things that I should be doing right now. As you know, currently getting ready to sell the house here, going on the road full time. So that's its own little level of misery, getting Bruce ready to do all that and become my new house. I've got, I think, no less than three videos coming up on Bruce. Make that four. Uh, we've got the actual install of the insulation and the sound deadening material. We've got the dual drawer system install. I'm going to be putting in the flooring and the auxiliary drawer and shelving system. And then of course we've got the Lens Sun solar, hood mounted solar system that I'm going to be putting in. That's been uh, trepidatious, but I think we finally got enough good weather to get that done. So no less than three or four videos coming up on Bruce. Of course, roll all that in with me trying to finish a book just between us, it's actually two books. So yeah, all I have to say that I'm trying to maintain at least some measure of sanity or at the minimum, some level of operational sanity. A lot of bandwidth being taken up. So I wanna do a quick little tutorial to kind of break the monotony up here. It is extremely easy. It's a quick and dirty way of making a YouTube thumbnail, not just easy, but qualitative way to make a YouTube thumbnail. There's only one little key component that I'm gonna show you here. I don't know that sounds kind of clickbaity, but it is uh, extremely important and I can guarantee you it's going to set your YouTube thumbnails apart from the rest. I'm going to switch over to the old computer screen here, show you this extremely easy, quick and dirty way, in other words, the photographist way, to make a YouTube thumbnail that you're going to absolutely love. It's not gonna take us maybe three or four minutes, if that. So let's go. You know what? A slight addendum to what I just said. There's no reason why I shouldn't just show you me making the thumbnail for this video in the actual video of the video. How meta is that? Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna show you how I made the very thumbnail that you clicked on to watch this video in this video. Oorah. Just for shits and giggles, let's pretend that you've already did the hard part and picked out your photograph or your image, whatever you might have, for your YouTube thumbnail. I'll go ahead and say this, folks. This is not a tutorial on SEOs on how to pick a ideal, if there is such a thing, YouTube thumbnail. No idea about the text. Personally, I don't care about that. You very well may. This is just going to be a quick technical tutorial of how to make the best visually appealing YouTube thumbnail. First of all, I have our picture open up inside of Photoshop here. You can do this in any order that I'm about to show you. I personally open up my photo because generally I'm processing this in Lightroom. I just click edit in Photoshop and it brings it into Photoshop for me and it's very painless. This is the image I'm going to use. First step, go up to file and we're going to click new. I'm using Windows, so it's going to be control N as a keyboard shortcut. I suppose that would be on a Mac, command N. So we're gonna click new. I make a lot of YouTube videos, folks, if you haven't noticed, so I already have a preset here. I sincerely hope that you do make a preset. That way you don't have to go in, change the dimensions, everything I'm gonna show you each and every time. As of 2022, when this video was being recorded, the spring of 2022, the ideal thumbnail size for a YouTube video is 1280 by 720 pixels. That is a 16 by 9 format. So that is what my little preset is here. If you don't know how to make a preset, all you're going to do, of course I'm lazy and I've never retitled it, just go in to our new command as we've shown here, opens up this little new document dialog. You're going to change your width to 1280 your height to 720, switch your orientation to horizontal, make sure that's horizontal. Oh yes, and uh, make sure that's set to pixels, that's 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. Leave the resolution to the default 72 pixels per inch. Change virtually nothing else, leave it in RGB color. Don't even open up the advanced options. You don't need to do that. Make the title, whatever you want. Click the little arrow here, it's gonna ask you to save that as a preset and you're gonna have a preset. So all you'll have to do is what I'm gonna do here. Go in, click your custom 1280 by 720 at 72 PPI, create. It's gonna open up a new window here in Photoshop, completely blank, tabula rasa. To get our picture over here, be sure your move tool is selected. 
Be sure your little turtle is selected. I suppose that's a tortoise. Go back to your image, click anywhere on the photo, hold and drag up to your template window. You just want to switch back over, keep holding down that left mouse button or that left part of your control pad, drag back down. You'll see the cursor has turned to a little plus sign beneath the arrow. Release. Don't worry about this. I have this set in another color, color space to do a book. So if that comes up, just click OK. And boom. You can see that my image is massively larger than the actual template. And this, folks, is the important part. What you need to do before you touch anything else, go down to your Layers panel. This is Layer 1. You can rename it if you want. I don't. This is our image that we've brought in on top of our template. We're going to right click on that layer, go up to convert smart object, convert to smart object, click that. That is paramountly important. What that's going to do is maintain the dimensions, everything that was embedded into that photo inside the photo, and it's not going to change no matter what you do to it. Now the reason you want to do this because we're going to be resizing this to fit our template and if you do that a few times it's going to be extremely pixelated. Let's take just a second I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So let's say we didn't convert that to a smart object. I'm just going to take off the smart object and I probably will speed this up folks but I'm going to resize this down to more or less the dimensions of our thumbnail size. Of course, you're going to be moving this around just like I'm doing here, changing the dimensions, getting it to fit, make everything exactly how you want it. You're going to be moving this around, changing up a few things, changing the contrast, changing the exposure, whatever you're going to do. I'm no sensor. It's extremely pixelated. You can see with these little glass tubes, it just doesn't look that great. That is what happens when you don't convert it to a smart object first. Now let's convert that back to a smart object. So will this convert it back to a smart object and you know it's a smart object because it has a little smart object icon right here in the edge of the layer thumbnail. We're going to do all the same little moving around, all the same little adjustments that we did to the non smart object thumbnail. And let's place it onto our template one more time. Let's zoom in. And that should not be pixelated. Yeah. Beautiful. Most important thing you can do, guys, if you take nothing away from this, whenever you're working with an image in Photoshop that you've done edits on, if you're going to be manipulating it in any way in terms of size, just convert it to a smart object takes two seconds yeah believe me you're doing yourself a favor I'm gonna stick with this uh, yeah let's put a little bit of text on here what do we want to call this video go over to your toolbar in Photoshop click your little horizontal type tool or vertical type tool if you're that kind of psychopath horizontal type you wanna go over here um, where do you wanna put it let's go here that's what she said Generally, I like to use some type of just standard non-weird font. There's a big thing going around with this weird kind of drawn sketch looking font. I don't really subscribe to that. So I'm going to change that to white. And folks, this is wholly subjective. Uh, essentially, if you've got to this point, you've already made your thumbnail. The only thing we're going to do outside of actually designing it here, which I'm just going to show you for giggles, is uh, actually exporting it. And we're going to get to that in just a second. Let's go to our little paragraph tool. Where are you, paragraph tool? There we go. And let's change the size of that to 60. Let's go crazy. There we go. Let's say something very straightforward to make a perfect, how to use all caps. Thumbnail. Not thumbnail. Yeah. 
Let's go with the easy way. There we go. I don't put a lot of effort into this kind of thing. Uh, do whatever you like. But like I said, uh, the thumbnails, of course, are important. But they're not that important. Focus on some more things, okay? Now, here's the important part, folks. If you put a little bit more work into your thumbnails than I do, let's say you've got everything done, everything is perfect. Go to File. We're going to have to export this. Go down to Export. It's an extremely long keyboard shortcut. To me, it's easier just to click. Go to Export As. It's going to bring up your export dialog here. There's a few things you're going to need to pick. First of all, personally, I leave my format in JPEG. Don't quote me. I believe that YouTube will accept PNGs and DNG files now, but I know for certain they accept JPEG. It's just the easiest thing to do. Keep in mind, you're going to be mainly displaying this thumbnail to people on very small screens, on mobile devices. Very few people, I would say the fractional minority, will have big screens, so I leave the quality as good. I wouldn't go below that because nowadays like 4k is becoming the standard nearly so go to good to great keep in mind the higher the quality the bigger the file doesn't really matter in our case since it's so small but go with good it's always a good rule of thumb double check your image size be sure it's 1280 by 720 pixels leave the scale to 100 percent canvas size leave that to the image size so 1280 to 720 unless you want some type of border around there completely up to you don't worry about the color space, leave it as sRGB. So after we click export, we're going to choose where to put it. Just pick whatever file location on your computer. Generally, I put it in the YouTube video folder for whatever raw video footage that I have so I can find it easily. And that's going to ask you to rename it when you do that. So we're gonna click export. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to put it in my general hard drive and name it um, unknown video. That's Vito, but you know, really doesn't matter. Click save. That is going to export it. It's just that quick. So whenever you go to upload your video into YouTube, just go to upload thumbnail, find the little area that we picked for our freshly minted thumbnail. Where are you? There it is. Click open. It's going to pop up there and it fits perfectly. So there you have it folks making the easiest best youtube thumbnail only involves two real things knowing the size youtube prefers for the thumbnail in our case as today end of april 2022 it is 1280 by 720 16 by 9 format that's the first step second step be sure you convert your image you're using for your youtube thumbnail to a smart object in photoshop before you begin resizing it doing anything else that is going to keep it from getting pixelated that's going to keep all the quality there and then when you export it just be sure that you know where to find it thanks a lot folks for this admittedly hasty youtube video it is a very important skill to know whether or not you're into photography or anything else anything you're putting on youtube you're going to want a good thumbnail the seo the image you pick, everything else is completely up to you. But for me, this is the best way that I have developed to make your thumbnails quickly and easy. Until next time, folks, Adam Welch. I still can't end these videos.